Hello, my name is Erin and I currently have a brain shimmer. If you already know me, you might have watched my Thanksgiving vlog where I was talking about not really feeling well and that we were trying to figure out what was going on and now we know. So it's not really a nice thing to talk about. I've tried to film this video a couple of times today and it's a wee bit of a struggle but everybody keeps saying to me and I'm saying to myself that this could potentially help somebody or make somebody feel like they have a wee bit of company if you're also going through this so that's why I am persevering. So today I just kind of wanted to take you through how I found out that I have a brain tumour and kind of give you a wee bit of information as to where I'm at and what kind of tumour I have and all that kind of stuff. So we'll do that first then we'll jump into the timeline. So as of right now I don't know what type of tumour I have. They said that normally they can tell by the MRI what type it is and you know if it's likely cancerous and all that kind of stuff and they just can't figure it out with mine for some reason. So there's a lot of unknowns which is definitely the worst part of this situation. So I have to wait two weeks after my craniotomy to find out. So it is a golf ball sized tumour on my temporal lobe, like on my left side, and it's pressed against the part of my brain for understanding and communication. My craniotomy is tomorrow morning, so today is November 14th, and it is tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. I have to be there at 6 a.m. and I'm obviously not allowed to eat or drink anything past midnight tonight. So let's run through how I found out that I had a brain tumour. So it starts in August of 2023. <laughs> It starts in August of 2023, it is now November 2023. So at the beginning of August, I had my first seizure, but I did not realize that it was a seizure at the time. And so basically what happened was it was a really bright and warm day. We were in an ice cream shop, me, my boyfriend Devin and his mommy, and we're all just like having a great time. And we'd been walking about in the heat and I looked down and I saw a packet of crisps that you can get in Ireland, right? And I was seeing them in this teeny tiny um, ice cream shop in Canada. So my immediate reaction was like, oh my God, like, and I wanted to tell them that we always had those crisps whenever your mom and dad like took you to the pub and you were wee, that's kind of what they give you to survive on. Um, so if you're from Ireland, you'll know about bacon fries, obviously. I looked down and I saw a packet of bacon fries and I was like, oh my God, that's so random. But this shop had a couple of wee, like, uh, random like brands from like Europe and all that kind of stuff so anyway I went like and I turned around to tell them about the bacon fries and as soon as I turned around and I like gasped they looked at me the whole room started spinning my mind went completely blank which I mean my mind is always running so for there to be silence was a strange experience when I tried to talk the wrong words came out and I could not for the life of me remember the name of bacon fries. Keep in mind, I'm looking at them. So for me, it very much was a scary experience. It felt kind of what I would imagine a stroke to feel like because it was like my communication that was all off. And after it, I had a wee cry and I called my ma and everyone kind of put it down to me being out in the heat and not being used to being in that heat at home. So after that first one in August, I didn't really think anything of it. I was grand for weeks and weeks and I didn't get another one until mid to late September. Devin, my boyfriend, was gone for the weekend and I took my first one on the Saturday. So keep in mind, he was there for the first one, right? The Saturday I'm on my own, I have one. The Sunday I'm on my own, I think I had one. The Monday he was back but he was at work and I think I had like two on the Monday and the reason I wasn't going to the doctors at this time was because I was between visas and I didn't have a health card to go to a doctor in Canada so I was just kind of pushing it off because I knew my visa was going to be approved soon but by the Wednesday of that week I think I had them all day long. I don't even know how many I would have had on that day and it was scaring me throughout my work day. I was just kind of mind going blank, room spinning, not being able to remember literally what I was just thinking about or just talking about. So it was a pretty stressful experience. And by the Wednesday, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna Google this and figure out what's going on. So I like typed into Google really quick and I kind of stopped myself and I was like, what? what What did I just search? And I couldn't remember what I just searched, but I also couldn't read it. It took me like two or three minutes to figure out what I had just typed in, which was obviously way too long. That was scary and Devin came home from work on the Wednesday and I said to him, listen, I have to go to the doctors. I'll pay whatever I have to pay. We need to go to the clinic tomorrow. Thursday morning, um, and this is still, I think this is 
the first week in October now. Um, Thursday morning, Devin was a wee bit worried that he was going to be late for work. And I'm not a big crier, but I looked at him and I started crying. And I said to him, listen, something's really wrong. I know something's off. I have this feeling. I need to go figure this out. And he was like, oh my God, okay, obviously, like, let's go. But I've never, ever had that feeling in my life. And so when I went to the doctors, I had been having um, these headaches in between like these seizures, but I didn't know they were seizures at the time. And I very much had like a pressure build up in my head after these seizures would like start. Even if I wasn't having a seizure at the time, it was just constant pressure in my head. It was so heavy. And if I put my head forward, I could just feel it fall forward. So we go to the first clinic and they did not want to see me. They said, you have to go to the emergency room, but I didn't have thousands of dollars to go and get the scans done at that time. So I went to another clinic and they said they would take me and they would run blood tests to see if they could figure out what was going on. So they ran blood tests and they made me do like all the wee checks that they do for a brain tumor where they make you like do this really quick and they'll hold up like their finger and you have to like do this. And I passed all of them, they were all grand. It came back from the bloods so that I was probably anemic, that was it. And they said that they were gonna put me down for a CT anyway, just to be safe. But they put me down as non-emergent, so it was a six to nine month wait. Then a couple of weeks went by, the last seizure I had was the Friday before Thanksgiving in Canada. And I had went to the clinic on the Thursday. So the Friday I had my last one, then I had Thanksgiving and that's when I filmed that vlog and I was like very very slowly but surely feeling better. Like every day I felt a wee bit more normal and then I got back to normal. So then a couple of weeks go by and I'm sitting with Devin. It was a Monday night, it was October 23rd and we were just watching TV, we were just chilling, we were literally getting ready to go to bed soon and I had another seizure. So keep in mind, he'd only ever been there for the first one, the rest of them I'd had on my own. So I, I'm having a seizure, I look over and I grab him and he's like, what's going on? And I tell him, just had one of those waves, I was calling it at that time. And I try to say to him, I haven't had one since Thanksgiving, but I couldn't remember the word, right? So keep in mind, the 23rd of October. So I look at him and I'm like, I haven't had one since... And I'm like, Emma was here, we had dinner, like that holiday. And he was like looking at me like, what are you talking about? And I was like, oh, Halloween. And then I went, oh no, that's not right. And then I thought and I said, oh, Halloween. And I just seen his face just go white with fear because obviously I didn't remember, I just guessed it. Plus Halloween hadn't happened. So after that, he was like, we're going to the hospital. And at this stage, my health card had just come in. So I was like, yep, let's go to the hospital. That was really late on Monday night. So we said, Tuesday, we're going. After the period in September where I was having them again, I was telling everyone, like, I think I have a brain tumor. And obviously nobody would expect you to have that, right? So everyone tells you what you want to hear. Like, it's not like, it would never be that. It's so rare, you're fine, you're grand, stop stressing kind of thing. But I was pretty confident that I had a brain tumor. So the Tuesday, morning i called my ma and i told her i was like listen whatever's going on it's not good like i'm pretty sure i have a brain tumor and she was like you don't have a brain tumor you're fine uh obviously which i would tell myself as well so the tuesday night we go to the emergency room or a e and we were there forever so after eight hours of waiting i was introduced to a medical student by the nurse and the nurse said this is the one with the headache so straight off the bat i was like this is gonna be great. So I talked to this medical student, I tell him all my symptoms and he was not the most helpful, to be honest. He kept just being like, that's a very odd story. Like it doesn't really add up. And I told him about the time that I like typed it in to Google and he, he started to laugh and he's like, oh, like what did Google say? And I said to him, I was like, well, Google said it was a brain tumor. And he was like, oh, well, you know, of course Google would say that. I was like, yeah, but I checked like 50 websites where you put in all your symptoms and blah, blah, blah. And I know Google gives you the worst case answer no matter what anyway, so I understand. But he looked at me and he was like, listen, the doctor that I'm shadowing tonight has been here for like 20, 30 years and he has seen like two, maybe three, max four brain tumors ever come through the emergency room and your symptoms don't match any of them. So I can reassure you, you do not have a brain tumor. Okay. 
So then I get the actual doctor a couple hours later and they haven't ran any tests on me at this stage, right? And he says to me like, listen, are you sure it's nothing to do with your period? Are you sure you're not just stressed? Um, you don't have anxiety? And I just said to him like, listen, like something is wrong. It's not stress, it's not anxiety, something's wrong. He said to me, listen, you've been here for like what, 10 hours, you know, I'm confident that your CT is gonna come back clear, but you've already been here 10 hours, what's another hour? We'll do our due diligence and we'll just send you for a CT. But let's focus on like after that, who we're gonna refer you to, blah de blah de blah. And Devin said to him like, should you not be sending her for an MRI? And once again, he kind of laughed him off. He's like, no, 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 no. Like that's for like emergency situations. We will not be sending her for an MRI, whatever. Two hours later, I was getting wheeled down to my MRI, but we slept for one hour in the 21 hours that we were at the hospital. He woke me up and he was like, we found a tumor in your brain and we can see the little white calcified parts. So we're hoping that that's all it is, but we won't know until we send you for an MRI. So that was that. I had to wait another couple hours for an MRI. I never seen that doctor again. I get sent for my MRI, which to be honest, was not the best experience. Like it's not, horrible like you're not in pain but it's just so small in there and they tell you to stay still but the machine is like thumping and your shoulders are like moving so i just like wiggled around a bit in my mri but it was grand um it just wasn't like the best 20 minutes of my life so then after the mri the neurosurgeon came down and talked to me and that's who i've been dealing with ever since so it is a golf ball sized tumor. Like I said, it's not just the wee calcified parts, but because some of it is calcified, they think that it's been in there a wee while, but again, they won't know until they figure out what type it is. So then and there, he wanted me to stay in to get it taken out the next day. He wanted to do a five hour awake craniotomy and I was super freaked out and I didn't want to do it. I said to him, I need a wee while to go home and process. So he wasn't like, ecstatic that I was leaving but he was happy enough for me to go home and, and come back in a couple of days. So it turned out that I actually got to come back home for like almost three weeks and he changed his mind in that time where he said that he doesn't think um, opening like my head right up is worth the risk of like exposing parts of the brain he doesn't think that he has to expose so he's going to put me under general anesthetic and it's going to be a four hour operation so a wee bit shorter. Um, I believe that because I've went through the emergency room, I've had a different experience. Like it's not the usual brain tumor diagnosis. Also, the day before I went to the emergency room, the hospital got hacked. So all their computers are down, all the systems down, they're doing everything by pen and paper. So that again is a different experience. So I feel like I have very little information as to what to expect after surgery, if I'm being honest. They said that I'll probably only be in the ICU hopefully for one night and then I'll probably be in the general hospital for a week or so just depending on how I recover. But they said my brain will swell after the surgery but they're only expecting me to have like temporary deficits um, in terms of like communication. I'm not too sure what it's going to be like walking. I would imagine I'm not going to be jogging around the ward or anything. That's going to be a wee bit difficult. I'm sure I'm gonna to have to relearn to do that and I might have to relearn to like talk and communicate or whatever but again we just don't know like they said you could bounce back like really quickly or you might have to be in the hospital for a wee bit longer um, but they said to me that the recovery period is normally about 12 weeks so that is where I'm at my surgery is tomorrow this is just kind of like how I figured it out. I'm sure I've left some parts out because my memory is awful. When I left the hospital, I had to go on anti-seizure medication. I can't drink on that medication. And when I first went on it, they gave it to me in a drip and then they gave me the tablet form. After a couple of days, you get used to it, but the first couple of days are rough. I'm not gonna lie, like you feel drunk. You can't walk in a straight line. I was spilling things. Um, it was, it was insane and it's really, really affected my appetite as well. If you're in a similar situation to me, you have to eat. Um, when I went to the pre-op, the nurses were like, you gotta get protein drinks, you have to get in your nutrients, you cannot starve yourself before surgery. It is not the nicest thing. I'm drinking crappy protein drinks and my dad's force feeding them to me. Um, but 
if I have to do it, you also have to do it. So if you're in a similar situation, please do it so we can suffer together. But that is kind of everything that I have as of right now. I'm sure I'm forgetting some things, but this is just kind of like a wee update and, and how I figured things out. But please say we pray that everything goes all right or send good vibes or manifest it or whatever you feel like doing, that tomorrow is okay and that my recovery is quick. And whenever I'm back to myself, I'm sure I will edit this video and get it up. And I'll probably post another couple of videos talking about maybe my recovery or something else i don't know um but if you got to the end of this video thank you so much for watching if you're also going through this you've got this i've got this it's going to be grand and i really appreciate you watching this video so that's it from me and i will see you next time